I, I do wonder about this particular problem and maybe you could speak to it of how smart contracts can take over certain industries in a sense, or how certain industries can convert their sets of agreements into smart contracts, which is, uh, you mentioned sort of talking to Dave from the bank, you know, many of our laws, many of our agreements are currently through natural language, through words. And so there is a process of mapping that has to occur in order to convert the legal agreements, legal contracts of today to smart contracts that by the way, AI may be able to help with, but as a, by way of question, how do you think we convert the legal contracts on which many industries currently function today or not even legal contracts, but ambiguous kind of agreements maybe they're loose sometimes into more formal deterministic agreements that are uh, represented by smart contracts. So I, th I think there's two, um, maybe two sides to this. Um, I think the first one is actually not a huge problem where you have things like the ISTA master agreement for derivatives, or you have these agreements that basically already reference a system somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Like for example, many legal agreements already accept e-signature. And so they're saying, hey, I'm going to use this computing system over here around signatures, and I'm going to consider, and there's laws around that, and there's clauses that say e-signature is good enough for this agreement. I, I actually don't think this is a big problem for the vast majority of legal agreements that use systems already, right? Okay. So what you'll do is you'll swap out one uh, repository or one or one set of contra system of contract settlement, mm -hmm. and you'll just say, hey, this blockchain system over here is my new system of contract settlement whatever it says is the um, state of the agreement instead of you know the centralized system over there, mm -hmm. right? And, and so there's actually a huge amount of agreements that are already um, able to, to do that, and I think we'll, we'll do that. I think there's another um, side to your question, which is the amount of agreements that are very ambiguous that can be turned into smart contracts. Mm -hmm. And I think the limitation there is, is twofold. First of all, like, like you said earlier, the highly reliable smart contract and the and the lack of opaqueness and the clarity of smart contracts is 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 very um, high and very powerful and very clear, and it's in my opinion going to be much much easier to take a smart contract and turn it into a set of natural language explanations mm -hmm. and just say hey um, you know this is what this does right so I think that many contracts are and even now in decentralized finance and DeFi. And in decentralized insurance, they're basically being rebuilt in this format, and 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 that rebuilding will make them clearer, like you said, and then restating those in natural language and explaining to people, well, you know, if the weather does this, it'll. I think it'll actually be a lot simpler to explain to people what the contract is <laughs> about. Fascinating, mapping smart contracts into natural language. I didn't even think about that. So that's that's you're you're saying that's doable and natural and easy to do because there's so much clearer, right? There's yeah. there's that forced clarity that you talked about. Yeah. I, I think the second um, aspect of this problem is the nuance around what contracts can be made unambiguous. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes down to, uh, often comes down to proving what happened, which is where Oracle networks and decentralized Oracle networks and Chainlink would come in. And um, our experience there is you know, quite extensive over the many years that we've worked on many different contract types. I think what it fundamentally comes down to is whether there is data. So we're not going to be able to make a hybrid smart contract about whether somebody painted your house the right color blue. We're just not going to be doing that because there's no data feed that tells us that your house was painted blue or that it was the right color of blue. You know, unless somebody sets up a drone with a color analysis tool and they generate that data. Which by the way, could be possible, right? They could, there could be, if there's enough demand, then the service would be created that has drones flying around that's telling you about the colors of, you know, all this kind of stuff. So if there's actual demand that that would be created and, and because because there'd be value to connect that data feed to the smart contracts and so on. I, I, I think I think you have it unbelievably right because there, there are already insurance companies that use drones to monitor construction sites from yeah. overhead and see how many people are wearing hard hats. Yeah. And if the percentage of people wearing hard hats isn't sufficiently high, then, you know, the policy is voided. And so in that case, there is a data source, and that data source can be put into a hybrid smart contract. So the limitation of hybrid smart contracts is, is there a data source or a set of data sources to create definitive truth 
to settle the contract and eliminate ambiguity. Yeah. And then, as you, as you said, I think as people realize that smart contracts are a format in which they can form agreement about things like that insurance product around, you know, how many people are wearing hard hats. If I'm the construction site owner, well, you know, I would really like a guarantee that your insurance policy is going to pay me out if everyone is wearing hard hats. And in that case, there is demand for the data and people will generate the data. And I, I actually think the insurance industry is interestingly a precursor of this because they're so data driven. You already see insurance companies paying IoT companies to put data into their customers' infrastructure at the cost of the insurance company to generate the data that the insurance company uses to make a policy for the customer. Mm -hmm. So you basically ha already have people who really want to price data into their agreements when they're of sufficiently high value paying for their own customers to get data sensors into their infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And I think as smart contracts become more of a requested format mm -hmm. or data-driven contracts become more of a format, there will be a growing demand about proving what happened mm -hmm. through data. So it'll be motivating totally new data feeds being created. By the way, the the insurance industry broadly, the revolutions there would be huge. I've worked quite a bit with autonomous vehicles, semi-autonomous and just vehicles in general. The insurance industry there, by the way, makes a huge amount of money, but is using very crappy data feeds. Uh, revolutionizing how, like not by crappy, I mean very crude. Like literally the insurance is based on things like age, gen, like basic demographic information, as opposed to really high resolution information about you as an individual, which you may or may not want to provide. So sort of you can choose from an individual perspective to provide a data feed and, and there, like the, the, um, the power of insurance to the to enable the individual to empower the individual could be huge because ultimately smart contracts motivate the use of data the creation of new data feeds but leveraging the the whatever service it provides in truth as opposed to some kind of very loose notion of who you are so that I, i'm not again not sure how that would change things but in terms of um, the fundamental experience of life. Because I think we all rely on insurance, not just in business, but in life. And grounding that insurance in more and more accurate representation of reality might just have transformative effects on society. Well, just to mention one quick thing that you said, where I noticed another trust issue, you said the user might not want to share their data. Yes. So what you could actually do, and what we've already worked on is, you can have a smart contract that holds the data and evaluates the data of the user without sharing it with the insurance company. Yes. And the insurance company knows that the smart contract will evaluate it according to the policy, mm -hmm. so they don't need the data. And the, and, and the user can provide the data knowing it'll never touch the insurance company because it's only provided to the smart contract. And suddenly you've solved another trust issue because the autonomous piece of code can evaluate information separately from the interests of both of the counterparties. And so this is the recurring theme. I think you're seeing this recurring yes. theme where there's a trust issue, people can't use the system, they can't collaborate, they can't share information that would make a better agreement for both of them, they can't you know, solve a risk in their daily life, they can't participate in a market, they can't have a bank account because nobody will give it to them because you know they can't give it to them in that legal system. And once you have an autonomous piece of code, that can also know what's going on, thanks to Oracle Networks and that combination of the code and the Oracle Network for the hybrid smart contract, th the same pattern just recurs. It's it's really the same pattern. And, and this is why I keep saying trust issues. It's because I basically, almost every contractual trust issue that I see, where there is a piece of data to prove and settle the trust issue in a way that works for both parties, um, there is no reason not to use an autonomous, highly reliable contract and piece of code. And uh, I have to tell you, I've seen this in, in a lot of different industries. I've seen it insurance, ad networks, global finance, global trade. Those are all multi-trillion dollar industries. And then there are, there are other smaller industries. 
Like even, even one of the first smart contracts we worked on many years ago was for search engine optimization firms mm -hmm. where they would tell you, hey, I'm going to raise your search engine ranking. Give me the money. And people wouldn't want to give them the money because they, they never knew if they were going to do it. And then the search engine firm doesn't want to do any work thinking they'll never get any money. Mm -hmm. So we just came, initially even came up with a system where you could put Bitcoin into a smart contract and it would be released based on whether the search rank of a website got to a certain level on Google for a certain keyword, right? And so the trust problem was solved. But it's it's just the same story, right? It's kind of like trust issues around AI, trust issues around financial products, trust issues around insurance, trust issues around social media, whatever it is. I, I, I think that's what um, people looking at this industry really need to understand. And once they do understand, they realize what this is all about. This is about redefining how everyone collaborates with everyone about everything where we can prove something through data.